Hi everyone and welcome to this, my Year 11 Mathematical Methods lesson on determining rules. Yes, it's so exciting. My name's Darren from Maskaroo, thanks very much for watching. If you are new to my channel, if you're an old hand, you know what's coming next. Yes, can you subscribe? I know, no one subscribes to mass channels, why would you? There's so many other things out there, way more interesting. But if you can, it absolutely makes me go and loopy. When my subscriber count goes up by five, I run around the house like a complete lunatic, which is, my age really isn't that um, a good idea. Right, all right, so enough of that rubbish for now. Um, what are we going to do? Learning objectives are fairly short at this moment in time. Just be able to determine rules of graphs from the information given in the question. All the stuff that we have been doing before, and this is our recap, basically is building to this. Year 11 Methods is a great course. It build, It's like the, the bricks for what you're going to use later on. We do all the stuff now. Come year 12, we go a lot, lot deeper. And there's a word of warning. When we get to year 12 uh, and the course over here in Australia, which is pretty much all over the world, we go much, much deeper. We don't reteach you the stuff. You have to know this now. And there are lots of tips and tricks and stuff that we reuse over and over again. And the problem with this course in itself is that it just has a lot of language. And once you see past the language, I think hopefully by the end of the course, if you watch all of these videos, you'll go, oh, I see what he means now. It's more about learning what the question's trying to tell you to adapt to the basic understanding that you're gonna need throughout it. So let me see what we've got here, right. So basically for the questions you're gonna do, they're gonna need an indication of the format of the graph and um, one or more points which lie on the curve. Now if it's one point they give you, it's gonna be really easy. You're gonna find an unknown, you're gonna be done. And that unknown will relate to some sort of transformation, it, normally a dilation, all right? It may be, if you're really, really lucky, a translation, but, but probably not, it's gonna be some sort of dilation. If they give you two points, then the chances are you're gonna to need to use simultaneous equations. And as I say here, you've got to be able to do this both by hand and using a CAS calculator, all right? So that's the recap. What are we gonna have a look at here? And it's straight into examples with this because the best way to learn it is actually examples. Right, thank you very much to Cambridge for allowing me to use your examples. You guys absolutely rock and roll. Thank you so very much. Let's do part A first. The rectangular body, oh, so let's try that again. The rectangular hyperbola. So see what I've told you here? They've actually given you the format of the rule. And what you're gonna find next year is for a lot of the exam questions, they're gonna want you to write your answer in a particular format, all right? And so that's a pretty good example of what they're gonna ask you to do. So a rectangular hyperbola, y equals ax plus eight, passes through the point minus two, six. Whenever we give you a point in mathematics, there is a reason for it. It is going to be there to tell you it's simply an x and a y value. Why would that be important to me? Well, what do we notice here? We got an x and a y value in that equation. Now that equation holds true for every single point on that curve. Every single point I can put into there and the y value will always be this a value divided by the x value at that point plus eight. So it says find the value of a. All right, we can do that because all I'm gonna do now is substitute. I've seen through the language. I've seen through that trick. So I've got y is equal to a on x plus eight. Well, what did they tell me my value of x and y was? Minus two and six. And again, make sure you always get them the right way around. I tend to do x and then y. The reason being is your brain is um, hard coded to think, well, that's the first thing in the equation. So I'm gonna use the first thing there, minus two. And lots of people sadly make silly mistakes there. So what have we got? We got y equals six is equal to a on my x value of negative two. And we're gonna do plus eight. In this situation, what are we gonna do? We're gonna do some nice, hopefully basic algebra. Um, for those of you who've, who've been with me from the very beginning, you'll notice that I say that, well, those are bunk beds, leave them alone, we'll get rid of the uh, the middle of the loner. If you've got no idea what I'm talking about, I'm so sorry, it's a mental breakdown in action. So what I'm gonna do is take away eight from both sides. So I'm gonna get negative two is equal to a on negative two. What I'm gonna do now, multiply both sides by negative two. So in this situation, a would become equal to four. Yay, now that's the pencil and paper way. Can we do it with a calculator? I should hope so. And I'm gonna use a TI Inspire for now. Classpad users, I have an emulator, yay. But what I'll do is I'll use the TI Inspire unless things are particularly difficult uh, or different for your calculator, if that's okay. And again, all I'm gonna do here is gonna go menu, algebra, solve. Yep, and I'm gonna do, what have I got here, six equals a on negative two uh, plus eight, 
I need to put a comma, and I'm gonna say solve for A, and what do we get there? We get A equals four. The world goes crazy, thank you very much. And that was a pretty basic example there of what these questions are pretty fundamentally, repetitively gonna ask you to do. Let's move on to the example number two, which is just part B of that same question here. The rectangular hyperbola y equals A on X plus K. Now, do you notice the subtle difference here? What is different? Well, in this question here, we had one unknown. Here, we're gonna end up with two unknowns. Why? Well, I'm fairly sure by the time I get repetitively doing these questions, I'm gonna start seeing through these tricks. And wherever I see an X and a Y, I know I'm gonna need a coordinate, but they've actually given me two coordinates, which tells me I'm gonna to have to do this twice. And later on when we get to calculus and differentiation, they're gonna give you coordinate points that actually stand for two things. It's gonna stand for not only a point on a line, but probably a maximum or a minimum, which is a big hint. And so you gotta see through this language to be able to sort of boil it down and do the, the, the really easy stuff that is method. I know I keep saying that, and if you're struggling, I'm so, so sorry. I promise you, stick with me. Right, so we do the first coordinate first, two comma seven. So let's say we got y is equal to a on x plus k. So seven is equal to a on two plus k. All right, what I do is I don't really like that fraction, so I'm gonna do multiply everything by two, which gives me 14 is equal to a plus 2k. And there we go. I've now got effectively one half of a simultaneous equation. I've got two unknowns. And to be able to solve that, I've got to have two equations. Where's, where am I going to get my next equation from? Oh, yes. I should go, go. My next coordinate. All right. So I've got one is equal to, all right, a on x, which is one plus my value of k. Oh, multiply everything through by one. We don't even really need to do that, do we? So we now know that one is equal to a plus k. Right, what can I do? Well, I could fire up my calculator and solve it simultaneously, which I'll do in a moment, just to check. Okay, and if you've got your calculator, always a good idea to check. But what I now know is that I can rearrange this and say, well, okay, A must equal one minus K. Why am I gonna do this? Well, because I can now substitute this into here. And your algebra, you may struggle at the beginning of this course, but what I tend to find is the stronger your algebra gets, the more mistakes you make and the more time you spend there going, why, 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 the quicker you'll get as you go through the year, I promise. So what I'm gonna do now is I know that A is one minus K, so I'm gonna substitute that in there. So therefore I get 14 is equal to one minus K plus two K. So 14 is one plus K, so K must equal 13. Yay! Well, if K is 13, A is one minus K, where I'm getting that from here. So A is one minus 13. So in that situation, A must equal to negative 12. Right, there we go. So those are my values. Find the values of A and K. I'd make that clear for my examiner to make sure. And the working out has to be shown, right? And again, that's very dependent. But let's fire up my TI Inspire. Again, your class pad users are pretty much the same. You're just gonna solve a set of simultaneous equations. So let's go menu, uh, algebra, Solve a system of equations, solve a system of equations. How many equations have I got? I've got two equations. I'm gonna change my variables to A and K, so just A comma K. Just makes it easier that I don't stuff up and put X and Y as all my calculator doesn't throw some sort of a wobbler. Right, what have I got here? So what am I gonna put in here? So I've got 14 equals A plus 2K. And I'm gonna put A equals one minus K. Hit enter, what do we get? A is minus 12, K is 13, the world goes crazy. And again, I'm gonna say this over and over again throughout this course. The examples I use are really, really good examples from Cambridge, okay? They're the basics, but they show you the fundamentals, yeah? And where I can with some of these lessons, I'm gonna go deep, I'm gonna show you how to do it backwards and the tips and the tricks and all those type of things. But if you can, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That one little click from you means absolutely the world for me. Very few people watch my content, all right? Or at least they don't tell me they watch my content. So if you can click that button, it, it, it is huge, okay? Um, right, example three, a graph which has the following rule. Notice again, they've given me the rule. Yes, how many unknowns do I have? I have two unknowns, an A and a H. I'm starting to look for this in the question. I'm looking for patterns. And I think methods is all about pattern spotting. Looking at the question going, aha, I know which topic that's dealing with. I know specifically what you're asking me to do, and off we go. And again, the big hint here was the fact that they've given me two coordinates. So I'm gonna look once again for simultaneous equations. Right, find the values of A and H. So let's do the first coordinate first. We get two is equal to A 
square root of x, which is 4 minus h. All right, oh, that looks a bit tricky. Can I do this with pencil and paper? Huh. Do I need it as a challenge of the pencil and the paper? Uh, no, nah, I'm going to do this one using my cows. Find the values of a and b. Right, now let's do 7 and 4. Uh, we've got 4 is equal to a square root of x, which is 7 minus h. So there we go. Those are my two things. Fire up my calculator once again. T I inspire. Uh, menu, algebra, solve, solve system of equations. What have we got again? We've got uh, a and h, a comma h. Hit enter. And then let's put my equations in. 2 equals a uh, da, 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 square root of 4 minus h. And then what is this one here? 4 equals a uh, square root of 7 minus h. Hit enter. And what do we get? a equals 2 and h equals 3. So there we go. So we get therefore a equals 2 and h equals 3. Now, how would I know if I'd made a mistake? Because my values that came out would be somewhat random. Yes. And also, you always want to make sure. I mean, the question, if it got loads of decimal points, the chances are the question will say round to two decimal places. Because I got whole number values there, I'm fairly sure that I'm doing a good job. Okay, now moving on to example number four. Find the equation of the circle whose center is at the point 1 minus 1 and which passes through the point 4, 3. Okay, so what I was taught when I was at school, and you would argue I'm still at school because I'm a teacher, but anyway, there's one. And there's minus one, and I'm going to draw my circle roughly through there. Is this, is my oh look at that, and that's going to go through four comma three. So first things first, what have I got? I've got a coordinate. Yay! So I've got an x value and a y value. I've got a center of my circle, which also tells me what it gives me an indication because we've done circles, yes, circles. So I know now that I have x plus or minus some sort of value squared plus y plus or minus some sort of value squared equals r squared. Now, obviously, in this situation, we've got 1. So my x value is plus 1. So I know that's counterintuitive, so that becomes minus 1 in there. And what's my y value? It's minus 1. So I'm going to put plus 1 in there. OK, so that's the counterintuitive stuff. We've dealt with that in a previous video. Right. Do I know anything? Do I know an x value and a y value? Of course, I know an x value and a y value. So I've got my x value is 4. So it becomes 4 minus 1 squared plus y is 3 plus 1 squared equals r squared. Ooh, 4 minus 1 is 3, so we get 3 squared. 3 plus 1 is 4, is 4 squared, which gives me r squared. 9 plus 16 is equal to r squared. So 25 is equal to r squared, so r is equal to plus or minus 5. Now you're going to turn around and say, well, no, no, hold on, it's obviously plus 5. Why is it obviously plus 5? It's obvious to you, but could you communicate that to an examiner? Well, hopefully, yes, because we've got to now start saying, particularly in methods 3 and 4, that uh, we realize there are lots of values that R could take, or in this situation, two values, but we're going to discount one. And in an exam, you have to discount any values and tell the examiner why. So in this situation, I say, therefore, R is equal to 5 as r has to be greater than zero. So I'm going to put that down. I'm going to qualify and say, ha, we can't have a negative radius. Uh, could my radius be equal to zero? Probably not. Not if it's got one and minus one and uh, four comma three. So we know r equals five. Have I got everything I need to know now to find my equation on my circle? Yes. So therefore, my answer is that x minus one squared plus y plus one squared must equal r squared, which is 25. Now, is there another way we could have found R? Is there another way we could have found R? Well, yeah, I should go, go because uh, another easier way or a different way of doing this is to realize that I would have had there a right angled triangle. Yes. And so because I know that point there is one comma minus one, I could work out my horizontal distance is going from one to four, which gives me three. And I could have worked out my vertical distance because I'm going from minus one to 3, which is 4. And we know that that would therefore be a 3, 4, 5 triangle because it's right angle. And I could have saved myself all that working out. Well, which one would I have used in an exam? Ultimately, very much depends on the level of working out or the number of marks that were expected. But just be aware that there's always going to be different ways of doing these. Now, believe it or not, that's the end of the lesson. Let's just review the learning objectives. I think it's important to go back and say, well, hold on. I started off 
is that we're going to do. Be able to determine rows of graphs from information given in a question. I should Coco. And there we go. That's the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you can, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Otherwise, hopefully I'll see you in another video. Oh, and if you want downloadable notes, all the stuff I've written on behind me, then you can go to, oh yes, mathsguru.com. M-A-F-F-S guru.com. Hope to see you there. Take care. Bye-bye.